I am delighted to introduce you to our uh, topic and our guest today. I think we're going to have a great discussion here today, but we're also going to learn about uh, an innovative platform that was started at Columbia University that is really addressing the tech support uh, challenge that we all face um, uh, from a from a different angle. And so I am uh, delighted to uh, welcome uh, Ryan Green from uh, an, uh, a, a startup organization, GoGo Quincy, to the stage. And uh, we can kick off this uh, discussion today. And I love how everybody's using chat this the, today and, and introducing each other. We got some really, uh, we got some rock stars in the audience today. So the uh, Ryan, Great to have you, and uh, looks like the New York City skyline there behind you. Yes, it's uh, also not a backdrop. It's it's real. Yeah. Um, you can so. see, I get all the pixels. Right. <laughs> That's the real thing, folks. Uh, so um, excellent. Well, Ryan, I know we're going to dive into this, uh, this innovative uh, organization that you're with, uh, but before we do that, and, and tech support in general. But before we do that, let's uh, get to know you a little bit better. Tell us a little bit about your story and what led you to being involved with this uh, initiative. Absolutely. And Steve, just thank you so much for having me today. Positive Aging as an organization, the resources that you provide, your viewers, your followers, just the internet in general, really, really appreciate it. I, I think you just do so much. Um, by way of, I guess, introduction, I usually start out with the fact that I am not a kid, but I am an only child. And the company started about three years ago in the during the heart of the pandemic. I was visiting an older family member and my grandfather, who I had not seen in about seven months. And because I have no cousins and because I have no siblings, I am usually at the time, I was tech support. And seven months of not being able to assist an older family member. He comes out of his bedroom after just a list piling up. He's carrying his yellow legal pad, 17 computer tasks on it, a printer not working, hasn't seen email in three weeks, and just was no longer connected to the people that he was hoping to be connected with. I am on spring break. I was in business school at the time, um, or excuse me, I guess it was winter break. And I bit my my tongue and I just put my head down and I got through those computer tasks. And each one only took me a few minutes. And it made me realize that there is so much that digitally native generations take for granted. And Quincy was founded shortly after. Um, and it's just been an incredible journey uh, the, last, the last couple of years. I love it. Okay. And we're going to dive into more what you do and what you don't do uh, here in a moment, but I'm thrilled that we've already got a bunch of uh, questions coming in. <laughs> I kind of knew this was going to happen. Um, so the, um, but uh, okay, the um, I, I love the story and um, the uh, okay. So let let's kind of let's get that out of the way in terms of sure. tell us a little bit about you know, how you created this, uh, this business and, and uh, the support that you have from, uh, from the outside and kind of where things are. And then we'll dive into some of these tech questions and uh, have a, a, a really cool um, discussion about just tech support in general. Totally. Um, I, I think with any service, with any experience, it's about the team. And we just have an incredible team. I'm lucky to have a phenomenal co-founder with a PhD in linguistics and a background in technology, um, having designed products for older adults for the better part of a decade. Uh, and when we put our head down, we knew there were a few things like that were table stakes. We wanted our users to always be able to speak with a human right out the gate. You call in, there's a phone number available or in our technology suite, you click a button and you, we are notified you are on the phone with us in five minutes tops. That is the gateway to accessing everything. I like to think of us as a grandchild on demand. So the irony about tech support, and let me actually take a step back, technology in general. 
I have not met a 20 year old, a 30 year old, a 40 year old who at one point in the day doesn't want to pick up their laptop and throw it out a window. <laughs> and that's a universal denominator, right? There you go. It, it, that's, that's it. And so the joke is internally, we, we can't save everybody. So we just focus our efforts on a, a, the, a older demographic, an older generation where we know there has been some neglect in the past. So that's first and foremost, when we, we started this system, we knew that it needed to be easy, easily accessible. We wanted it to play into the points that people actually need support with. Um, there are some incredible resources out there that teach you how to use your devices. AERP has systems. There are uh, platforms that give you video lessons. I, I spent three years of my career in e-learning. So I have an immense appreciation for the value of being able to learn something digitally. We though are not your teacher. All we right. are the, I'm yeah, sorry. That's a good, I, I wanna just reiterate that to sure. sort of distinguish <laughs> yourself from what you've created from some of the other platforms that we talk about on a regular basis here um, that are more, how do I operate my phone? How do I get on next door and make posts? You are, this is tech support where I've got a problem and I need somebody to fix it. Is that correct? That's it. That's the beginning of it. Because what we found was the first step is unlocking problems. So if a problem happens, you give us a call, we fix it. What we found was in that, by having that resource, it unlocks the best of the internet. Telehealth, telemedicine, being able to buy things online, communication, entertainment, and we help with all that as well. Something doesn't have to not work for us to help. It's mm -hmm. that there is something that you're looking to accomplish and we are going to rise to that challenge. I'm looking to accomplish printing. We can do that. I'm looking to find a better price for something online. We can help with that. Uh, my email hasn't been received for three weeks. We are absolutely going to be able to help with that. Okay, cool. So, the, and, and you sort of are looking at the support versus the learning, but I think they, uh, that in doing some of those tasks, uh, you are your your the persons that go onto your platform are going to be learning something. Uh, so, yes. um, but j just so uh, you know, I mean, I got kind of the bef be before we uh, we logged in. I I wanted to just give. So here's number one. Here's the Go Quincy uh, website, which um, we can kind of go through and figure out how you know folks can utilize this. But then I just wanted to give you a glimpse at a few of the learning sites. And, and if anybody's got experience with these in the audience, feel free to, to kind of share your experience. But the um, uh, there's Get Set Up, there's uh, Senior Planet, and I'm just cutting and pasting these addresses into um, chat as I'm doing these. There's... Um, uh, I think this one is based in Canada called Cyber Seniors, and I get emails from them. That's another one where you can kind of take classes and stuff. And then this is one that Ryan shared with me right before um, we logged in. It's called Teensers. Teensers, kind of a, um, a play on the seniors term. So, um, okay, cool. So um, let's kind of go over how do you um so it's basically we go to the go quincy website and you just pick up the phone and you give somebody you give somebody a call and tell them your problem is that how it works yes i, I think you have in a uh, an attendee list that it actually it ranges some people really just want the comfort of being able to pick up a phone and placing that call and they are going to speak with someone I'll ask you all not to do that this specific moment because I have seen that happen where people want to test it out. Okay. They're there, they're there to help. Um, and, and it's totally, that is, that is absolutely something that we love. We also though set our users up with a suite that ranges from click a button and we'll notify you, uh, digital magnifying glass, different tools 
to make navigating technology easier. I do see a question um, about uh, the, the the packages, and I the question was, is it free? And yes, there is actually an option. Um, and Steve, I'll, I'll let you share what my team came up with um, to make sure that all the participants are able to to take advantage of that. But we do have a uh, a tier that is free support, and that was really important to us that we we realize some of our users cannot afford support. And we wanted to figure out a way for them to feel that they had a support mechanism in place uh, whenever they needed uh, with some time allocated. Great. And yeah, I will post that in there. And basically what it is, is, is that, um, and Ryan and his team have generously given us extra support. You, everybody gets uh, some limit of free support, but uh, we've added a few extra minutes on there uh, if you use the term pro-aging when you call in. Um, and, and this is a great way to just try it out and see if it's helpful and it, and it works okay. for you. But like, for example, let's say, so that free support is 20 minutes a month. Um, what can, What's some examples of some tech support things that you all can accomplish in 20 minutes or less? A lot. That's like actually one full session. And when I when I think about some of the most frequent uses of the service, this is actually a, a, a great use for them. Um, I think of them as, as three categories. Uh, one is the username management side of the equation. So, so often we talk about passwords as a problem. The joke though is we all have, and I'm not condoning this behavior, but we all have our one or two favorite passwords. That's easy enough to remember. It's actually the usernames that we have found to be really challenging to help in people keep organized. And so we've created some tools that help with that. Um, but that is absolutely a good use of that time. A second thing is what settings are you using on social media? We love that our users use social media and we couldn't think of a better way to stay connected. Something that we always caution our users about. What is shared on social is going to be seen by others and that is fine. The challenge is some bad actors have learned that they can take the information from an account, they can tap into, and by tap I mean logical deduction of who you are connected with, and they can message them directly using information found on your account and sending messages as though they are. it's a message coming from you. Um, a, a, a scenario I saw last week, and this is just one of a couple of, I mean, thousands of this, Scenario where it's I, I saw that uh, your grant uh, someone sending a message saying something like uh, Rachel's granddaughter Jessica's in the hospital and she's asking everyone who can if they can to send a couple of gift cards um, with some funds on it. Here's the address, and it seems benign, but it actually is a very effective tool, and it's really it's unfortunate that. Uh, so many people want to help. So many people will do what they can to assist, and it just falls in into that type of trap. Um, that one's really, really a. Uh, I'm, I, I hate seeing that one, and it does happen. And the last one is actually a, a play on that as well, which is emails are so easily organized and structured as though they are coming from a legit source, a PayPal a LifeLock, a Norton antivirus. And I will admit, I fall into this myself constantly. Oh, no. they're, they're, these, they're like, they're um, white lab coats. And these, yeah. these people that craft these, these messages are insane. Totally. An email where I, I saw this, I received it three days ago. And I have my own technician because of this. Because I, I don't think twice sometimes. I see a a bill come in. Thank you for renewing your $800 subscription. If there was an error, click this button. Yes. Guess who clicks that one every time? No. And, and, but so it sounds like some of your, your clients, if you're number one, you, we all need to be cautious and we need to be concerned about these things. And there are tips, like I've gone through some training where now, you know, I right click on these links and I look at the link before I open it. But um, if somebody was hesitant, 
they could call you up and um, call up Go Quincy and at least walk that through your, with your team. A hundred percent. And that I think is a great use case for some of those free minutes. Okay. Um, it's, it's just know that, and like any support, like any support, you need to put things in place preventatively, preemptively. You want to know that you have your support mechanism in place before you need it. The moment you need it and you need to find the support, set up the support, and then tackle the issue, I don't want to say it's too late at that point, but you are, you are increasing the amount of anxiety that is happening in that moment. And that is something that we constantly stress, just get ahead of. So now, like, I'm going to, you know, think I'm sort of reflecting on my own IT and technical support. And uh, usually uh, the first thing that comes to mind is my computer is just, it feels like the hamsters are not running around the wheel. (laughs) Now, I mean, everything's slow. You try to turn it off. It takes forever. And then... Yeah, you know, my IT support desk is my brother, and uh, I call him up, and he works his magic while I sit in the corner, and uh, usually everything works out. So it's sort of your your computer, your equipment is not operating that well. And then you brought it up earlier. This printer that's over to, to my <laughs> to my left is, you know. I'd probably say one in 30 times that I'm trying to print and something happens and I got to start like unplugging stuff and doing things like that. Are these scenarios that go Quincy could help somebody with? A hundred percent. I I think those are great scenarios. And so many of us, not I, because I'm an only child, but so many of us have the younger family member or the family member who's a little more familiar with technology and we like to give them the call and so, that's fine. Now I'm assuming because my brother, usually when my computer's not operating uh, at performance level and it needs to kind of go through the updates and things like that, it takes longer than 20 minutes, you know? So mm-hmm. now when, I guess when somebody calls you up, you let them know, Hey, you've got X amount of minutes you know, free, what's your problem? And they tell you the problem is, is that, look, we're going to do everything we can in these 20 minutes, but just so you know, usually printer problems take X amount of minutes. Uh, and uh, there, there may be a charge that is incurred. Is that kind of how it works? So the free plan is really designed to be a, uh, for, for two scenarios, those who really cannot afford a another plan and those who just like to have a support mechanism in place, but may only need it every month, every other month, every three months. The other two tiers were designed to help with the scenario being able to forecast how much support one needs. So you'll see there's a scam protection structure. Sure, let, me, um, um, let me pull up, sure. I, I'm going to pull up the screen here and share it with totally. you. Okay, so this is the the pricing here. Um, right. Okay. So free. And, yep. So there, 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 there's some layers to this in that most people end up just going with the 1999 unlimited. We don't time it. We don't clock it. You use it as frequently as you'd like. The middle tier is for those who know that they probably don't need that much support. They do get a ton of emails or they want to put something in place for an a, uh, older loved one or a family member. And that one allows for us to spend as much time as needed on the scam protection. I saw someone message a moment ago that they receive emails from pay, quote unquote PayPal all the time. We know that that's a easily fraudulent email to, to duplicate um, or, or to create. And then anytime that there actually is tech support that's necessary, we just do it for however long that call is. There could be multiple issues on it for $11. So we, we really have designed this to be accessible at any level. Now, organizations do a few different things with this. Some will white label Quincy and they'll offer it uh, as a tier for their members. Um, So speaking towards some of the the people on the call today or uh, in this webinar, Um, others are inclined to offer as a um, offer Quincy as their own. So it could be white labeled and it could actually be uh, resold as well. 
So there are a few actual lines that we've seen just a lot of support with, and this is our direct-to-consumer line. There's, of course, independent and assisted living and aging in place communities all over the U.S. And then my favorite is employee benefits. Um, so we have a partner, Procyon, um, that they actually have implemented Quincy as an employee benefit, uh, voluntary employee benefit. Uh, so as so many of us are in our day to day and are being torn between taking care of younger family members and older ones, that's an option to just give them a resource to take some of that pressure off. Well, and there's a lot of remote workplaces now and, and things like that. You could see where that w- would be helpful. Okay, cool. And and I guess, you, you know, and and the, the thing that I kind of, when I talk about this topic, I sort of say, you, you know, we've got hundreds of senior living communities in our book. And uh, I don't know if you know this about me, Ryan, but I basically, I when I was 43, I lived in five different senior living communities as this sort of uh, project. And my first visit, uh, I was walking down the hallway, a woman had her door open, she needed some assistance, she shouted out, I came back, she goes, oh, it's the young guy who's living here. I ended up, you know, helping her get something off a shelf. But then she thought that I would know stuff about computers. So I went in and helped her with her printer. And um, it really opened my eyes to it's like, wait a second, We've got these communities, all the staff have IT support in the community, but do the residents have IT support? And um, I could see some real innovative uh, ways to to implement uh, better IT support in our senior living providers overall. But um, okay. Um, That's one of my favorite, that story I, I think is just, I love that you have that firsthand knowledge and experience it's it's i wish more people had that and saw what it was like no no and it was great experience but the um okay so uh good okay so we got a little background on who you are we got your innovative offering to help people it's um that's different from sort of the learning platforms this is a support platform and i guess the if I'm looking at your choices out in the marketplace, if if my computer is running slow and I didn't have my brother to help me, I don't have IT support in my small business. I got to go take this to Best Buy, to the Geek Squad, or you know, go online and find a tech to support. Um, yeah. And and who knows? Maybe I'd end up going to the Geek Squad, but this presents me with another option that's easy to implement. It's free to begin with to at least analyze the situation with me, and then I can figure out, you know, what direction to go. So I, I love it. And um, uh, but okay, thank you. <laughs> Let's see. We better jump yeah. on these questions here because uh, they they've been uh, piling up in the queue, and uh, so. The first one that came in right when we started was from Sue Elman. And Sue would like to know information about using OneDrive. Man, Sue, I have no idea what OneDrive is either, but it always pops up on my uh, on some of my messages. So now, what's the? are there any solutions there, uh, Ryan? Yeah, I, I think there's... So the, the short answer is yes. The longer answer is what's the what's the error how do I, I how do we identify the root of the challenge here and so is that a username password is the pop up asking you to enter in or update your information is it just a pop up that we want to minimize and just go into settings and this is this is all part of the science that goes into the offering uh, that we've created is helping identify and and yeah, and, and actually, like Sue, when I heard Sue's question, and Sue, you can jump in there and elaborate on it more, but what I was thinking, and this is my thing, is just storage in general. It's like, oh yeah, I mean, because we're getting all these pop-ups, I need McAfee, I need Google Drive, I need, you know, OneDrive, Microsoft, what have you. It's sort of like, okay, what should I do in terms of my storage solution? And there's no one answer that's going to work for any of us that's where you need to talk to somebody to right. get that through and and when i use the term the cloud <laughs> that 
that usually doesn't go over very well, but that's actually part of this, this question too. It's like, are we storing it physically? Or are we going to store it digitally? Are we doing it on this device on another? I could get into the weeds very quickly here, but the, 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 how I always think about solving challenges like this is how would you like it to, what is the end result? Are we trying to just protect the information? Do we want to share the information? Do we want to make it easily accessible across a few different devices? Do you have other devices? And this is where I'm actually not the best person at this, but my team is just phenomenal. Well, and also we're getting a glimpse of the methodology here, and it may just be, I want to get rid of this pop-up for OneDrive because I don't want it and I don't need it. Okay. Um, someone asks, are you equipped to help callers who are struggling with confusion and dementia as well as tech, or is that outside of what you found that you can address? Um, I'm curious how you'd answer that. I know how I'd answer that. Yeah. It's a spectrum. And so anything that touches memory care, uh, our team is, spends a lot of time with empathy, training, and having those conversations. And at the end of the day, we do our, our users a disservice if we don't work with them to understand what our limitations actually are. And so that is one of those scenarios that's always, a, it's an emotional challenge, I would say, more than anything for us. We're going to help as best we can, and we are prepared for that. But as you, as, as it progresses as dementia progresses, it becomes more challenging. We usually will loop in the younger family members, obviously with the user's permission, and it's a larger group uh, set of organization and preparation. I, I think that's probably the single most important thing. It's bringing in the sandwich child, the adult child with the, uh, with the user or. And, and, you know, one of the things that sort of getting on the soapbox is, is that it is a spectrum. And like this week I had lunch with Sam Simon who wrote a play called Dementia Man and he has early stage dementia, but he still uses his computer. He's writing plays, he's performing, he's doing all these things. And if we can help these help folks at all levels, utilize yeah. technology to improve purpose in their life, it's a winner. It, it, but, but the, yeah, we don't wanna make a blanket statement that anybody with a cognitive condition can't call, but I think that you guys are taking the steps to 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 help with that. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. Well, we were talking about. Uh, um, I'm going to jump ahead to a question I just saw pop up from Ruth. Are you prepared to to work with low vision clients? Uh, is, is is that something that you can assist with? So spectrum again. Um, Computers do have accessibility functions, and we're really good at helping our users find the right accessibility functions for them. That spectrum includes, though, color combinations, uh, co color limitations, magnification, uh, then there's a uh, closed caption. So short, long answer is pretty much actually what I just said. Short answer is yes, but everything has a spectrum when it comes to just human interaction with technology. So we do, we have a playbook. Uh, sometimes it doesn't work, but sometimes it, it actually really does, which is really quite lovely. And I dropped Sean Curry's contact in there for if you've got a loved one or if you've got low vision issues, a lot mm -hmm. of times getting the assistive technology or working with Joan Green, who I saw is on the call, working with- Hi, Joan. To get the assistive <laughs> technology so that you're able to- use your phone or your computer, getting that assisted tech in place so that now when that computer or phone isn't operating correctly, um, you can have a, a, a dialogue to diagnose and, and fix that. So, um, okay, great. And I see Joan dropped in some stuff there. That's, that's fantastic. Okay, uh, Suman asks, what's the best iCloud storage solution for photos and document storage? Oh, um, uh, Ryan, start asking this, but we are going to have a discussion in a couple of weeks on uh, d what to do with digital photos, where we're going to address that, Suman. But, uh, but Ryan, if you want to share any insights there on... I, it, it's not that I don't ha have... I don't have any recommendations. I can just go back to what are we looking to accomplish? Is it preservation? Is it sharing? Is it... 
Uh, do we want to make it accessible to a limited number of people more? Um, there's data storage and then there's data distribution and then there's data just management. Um, so I, I won't, I won't go through the, the tech stack that I would recommend, but it does sound like Steve is going to have a great resource on that. I, and if there's something more urgent, just call in, speak with a technician, tell them what the use cases that you, you need are, and they'll take it from there. And um, okay, let's see here. Uh, and I'm getting through the questions, then I'm going to go to the chat. Okay, so uh, please talk about the companies who do not provide phone numbers and do not make it possible to talk with them and communicate They're monsters. With them by phone. This makes us very uncomfortable. And sometimes younger family members do not seem to understand the importance of telephone communication. And, and uh, you know, this question sort of, dovetails into the primary principle of the company that you founded is just getting yeah. somebody on a phone. And I, I think what's really challenging is technology and resources today. The pandemic shifted technology forward and we are only going to continue going in that direction. We are not going back to the way things were. And this is both a good thing and a bad thing. Uh, good, right? I'll, I'll give you a silver lining. Telehealth and telemedicine the way that our users have been able to open up the breadth of doctors that they're able to connect with, absolutely huge. The way that they're able to now navigate my chart and the different platforms for medical records uh, that will help get a user logged into and set up with, we're not sticking around for the actual um, review of that documentation, but those are huge positives. The negative is technology is really not being created and implemented anymore for people who are not comfortable with technology. It does bridge, Quincy is here to bridge that gap, but you are absolutely right. I think these, these organizations are just a monster, just absolutely, it's not fair. All I and want it, to speak with is a human. And it really has nothing to do with a person's age. It, this is frustrating to an 18 year old, you know, when oh, I, yeah have my actually I, I would sort of say my children don't have the patience to sit on a line or navigate through the customer service queues they are used to solutions just like that right and um it's i'm used to being in lines and waiting on hold forever but but yeah talking to a real person is great okay so i, I had a flight canceled so i mean I, I because i was thinking about this i had a flight canceled three weeks ago couldn't speak to a human and then if I wanted to use a human to book a ticket, I was getting charged an extra $25. So in one scenario, it's impossible. In the other, it, it, they're making you pay to speak to a person. That is, that's just not fair. So uh, I am pretty passionate about that specific issue. And, and I'm, I'm, I know I'm jumping back on one of my soapboxes, but what we're talking about is technology that enables us to connect with a human to get something done, one of the best platforms that I'm familiar with is GoGo -Go Grandparents, because you know getting an Uber or Lyft ride is uh, not easy if you don't know how to use a uh, smartphone. And they've sort of utilized created technology where you can call an 800 number, and now you can get yes. your Uber and Lyft ride, and somebody will call you and make sure that you got there okay. It's great. Um, okay. Fun um, fact, Uber actually liked what GoGo -Go Grandparent was doing so much and GoGo -Go Grandparent didn't like this, but Uber made it that there's a phone line that older adults can call directly to Uber and have a car booked for them. So well, there's no charge for that. Yeah. Thank goodness. Because just like your airline thing, uh, I was waiting around for my Uber driver and there's just no way to get in touch with them. It's an, insane. Um, right. Okay. Uh, Sue has a follow-up. And it's what can OneDrive do for you and how to use it? So that's what she's looking for. Now, this is where I think some of those platforms that we were talking about earlier and your platform could intersect. Because Sue, let's say that you want to learn about storage for um, your computer and what have you, and you like learning. And this is not like a problem that you want solved. It's I want to learn about it and figure it out. Like there might be a class on Get Set Up or Senior Planet or something like that that you would enjoy taking and then figuring it out. 
Whereas calling Ryan's team, they're going to ask you questions and then figure out, okay, Sue, OneDrive is a storage platform. So let's, here are some different scenarios. Which one do you feel comfortable with? Is that how it would work? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's exactly. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, a uh, great question here from uh, Sean. What languages other than English can you handle? This one is this one is a top priority for us right now. Only English. Um, okay. We are currently exploring Spanish, and there is a request for Chinese as well. And when I say a request, it's actually a, um, I, I think a, a really important um, uh, option to include. Right now, it's just English, though. Um, okay, great. And uh, let's see. Um, Okay. Uh, okay. Are there computers that are better designed for older adults, like a computer for seniors? Now, the the I'll drop this into chat. There is GrandPad, uh, which is sort of the the ease of use tablet. It's not a computer that is out there. Over the years, I've seen a few companies sort of try to create a computer for seniors, but what they end up creating when they create that is a computer that nobody wants to buy because nobody wants to be referred to as a senior or an older adult. Would yeah. would would sort of, let's say that could somebody call y'all and maybe go through what would be the best laptop to buy or best yeah. system to buy? Totally. So there, there are two big thoughts here. The first is, I think, Steve, to your point, we have found our users and virtually everyone else do not want to be treated any differently. And so these pieces of hardware that are designed for, well, in this case, seniors, I actually tend to not use that word. Um, it, it makes it, there's a high level of um, uh, disinterest in that, it, in our experience. We use a, a remote desktop application. So when I, I, I think credibility is actually really important in, in this space because we do ask our users to give us a, to not even take a leap of faith, but it's, we have done everything we, we know to do to show that we are providing support all over the US. So we've been on Fox where we, we have these conversations, we take, we participate in webinars. Why I'm saying all this is because the technology we use, others will use as well, and they'll use them for nefarious reasons. And that's, again, super disappointing. We use a tool, remote desktop application. We are agnostic. So some people have one that they prefer, a team viewer or similar. Uh, we don't care. Whatever you're comfortable with, we have our recommendations, but it allows us to see what you see, take control over your device. You are always in control. We use a piece of technology. Our version allows you to just move your mouse or your cursor and you kick us out. But that is, is actually really important to note. Why I'm going down this path is because certain devices, PCs, allow for remote, remote desktop application. So a Dell computer, an HP computer, these are much more digestible uh, for being able to fix remotely. Apple computers allow for it as well but they have a couple of steps that have to be taken that we do a really good job guiding our users through, but it offers some challenges. So that's one layer to this. On the mobile side, Android operating systems, Google, Dell, HP, and similar, you can, you can use the same piece of technology on those devices. On Apple products, if you have a tremor, if you want extra levels of support, Apple products are much more difficult to provide support on. You can guide and you can see, but as a technician, you cannot actually take control over. There are security reasons for that, and that's a good thing, but it also makes it that if you give someone an iPad and you think you're going to be able to help them remotely, after you give it to them for Christmas and you and you leave the leave, go back home after the holidays and they're five days out trying to get into their username or password for an email account, you're going to be leaving them with a little bit of a problem. Great. Um, let's see. Uh, well, in the spirit of sharing information, I'm, I now I'm, I'm playing around with chat and I know that uh, a bunch of folks are dropping stuff in, but uh, 
David, uh, I'm glad you shared this. This is a, David, if you see in chat, chat he shared a computer called the Telekin. And, um, and he found that to be an easy computer to use. So that might be something that, that folks uh, would be interested in just researching. Um, let's see, Rita is, uh, uh, asks, what's the best smartphone with fall detection? I know Apple, I, I believe Apple watches are doing some fall detection. Um, I'm not sure if, if phones are doing fall detection at this point. I haven't seen that. Um... So uh, I'm happy to find out though. That's that's yeah. actually a really cool question. And um, I, when I, uh, my co-founder, when I when I mentioned this question to him, he's he's going to love it because he spent most of his career building wearables with ball protection and the like in there. So he's going to love that question. Um, we'll get an answer for you. All right. Um, I answered a call during the webinar. I was logged out. It took me a few minutes. Oh, okay. Um, the uh, yeah, the uh, listen, all of you that got at least got on this webinar, this is wonderful, and uh, <laughs> and I'm glad that you're on this webinar. And I apologize if there's any technical issues on our webinar today, but at least we know that you got a, a number now that you can call to get a little bit of help and maybe answer some of the technical support. And and do you get like calls about? I, I, I want to get on Zoom to see my daughter's play or something like that. Absolutely. Um, I, 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 that's, that's, in, that's since day one, I would say that has been one of the biggest requests. And now at, to, at this point, most people are comfortable with Zoom, but it's, hey, do you know how to turn on closed caption or captions in Zoom? Can you help me with certain accessibility functions in Zoom? And the answer to that is yes. Um, that. Uh, just it's it's that has become such a core part of how we interact with technology today. So okay, yes. cool. Okay, Walter says, could a user call for help using a website or an app? Thinking about my sixty-five to seventy-year-old parents who aren't very tech savvy. Well, Walter, I think the beauty of this platform is you're first going to talk to somebody on the phone, so uh, you could actually, if you wanted to. <laughs> You could use one of these things, I guess, to call and I and I dropped the number in there um, uh, for uh, go go Quincy. But then the person on the phone might guide you to okay, now let's open up your laptop and then figuring out if they if you can get the remote uh, login if that's something that's necessary. Correct. That's exactly it. And and to that question, when we say call a number. We really do mean a, a hard, like any phone will work. That's, we wanted to make it super easy to get assistance. Yeah. No. So no, it's not an app download or anything like that. It's truly a phone number. And then, um, okay, let's see. Lois asks, how do I sign up for the free service? Lois, I, hopefully you saw, I dropped it in there and you, you get extra time if you say pro-aging and that you're on this webinar. Um, Gabe uh, asks, Windows, Macs, Linux, mobile devices, iPhone, iPad, Android, you all have support for all of these? Yes, the Linux, I don't see many people Utilize everything else. Yes, though those are certainly a lot more consumerized. Um, yeah. Um, let's see. Okay, we talked about Telekin. Uh, Go Go Grandparents. Oh, Judith is sort of throwing out uh, some insight on Go Go Grandparents. Go Go Grandparents is expensive. Plus, it's hard for me to communicate with them because the representatives are not U.S. based. Okay. Interesting. Uh, thank you for sharing that, Judith. And uh, I, I'm. I think I may next month have. The, the the folks from go go grandparents on but that's uh that's that's great information that you shared um Joan Green has a message on there um that um that she's a great advisor and teacher networking group and and the thing that I like about Ryan's offering is it's not excluding somebody like Joan uh, like uh, an individual one-on-one -on -one coach or somebody that's helping you 
figure out assistive technology because of your low vision, it's actually complementing it because now, you, you know, if you had a problem, you've got the tools to, oh, geez, let me try Go Go Quincy for my tech issue. Instead of bothering Joan, she hooked me up with everything that I need, you know. Um, the, um, okay, we talked about low vision. Uh, oh, uh, Cecilia says, you recommend get set up IO, but I, I don't recommend get set up. I was just sharing them as a, a learning platform. But what's interesting, I don't know if you know this, the, the instead of .com, it says get set up IO. Do you, do you know what IO means? And is that something that we should be concerned about? Because in an effort to not go to scam websites, should somebody be concerned if they see a .io? It, you know what? It's a great question. No, it's not something to be concerned about. You can have a .org, a .gov if you're a government, uh, .com, .io, .ly. In the last six or seven years, we've seen websites become more creative with what comes after the dot because certain words before the dot are harder and harder to secure and to, to utilize for your own website. Um, so in theory, if we wanted to, gogoquincy.com could be quincy.io. But if you go to quincy.gov, you end up in Quincy, Massachusetts. So these are the different things that go into creating a website. I think Get Set Up um, does a lot right. A lot uh, uh, governments have been implementing them, so you can get free access. Uh, libraries have a uh, an experience uh, have access to them as well. Uh, I spent three years in e-learning. Something that I do see some of our users use both them and us because they are video based. So if a drop down search changes and they don't update their video, you may be able to figure out 75% of that video, but that other, that leap, we tend to get a phone call from a user saying, hi there, can you help me get from this video to what I'm trying to, to complete? And we absolutely can do that as well. It's sort of the, the benefit of having a, a human um, in the dialogue, in the interaction. Okay, cool. Uh, um, this is good. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, Judith, how do you save this chat? The the chat will be saved on the recording link at proaging.com literally, you know, an hour or so after this discussion. Um, so that's the best way to do it. And it's from start to finish. Uh, so it'll be a better way to access the chat. Um, let's see. Um, okay. Uh, oh, boy. More questions keep on coming in. Okay. Um, all right. The um, uh, could you help a stroke survivor who has aphasia set up a Zoom account? She can't talk and understand, but not as easily or quickly or completely. She lives alone, or could she learn how to use Zoom through another source? Her funds are limited. Okay, so Janet, I based on what I know about Ryan, um, if I think one of the challenges is that if somebody, whether it be cognitive or if they don't have the tools to communicate um, via the phone or via the internet, it makes it challenging all around. Like ordering takeout could be a challenge. Okay, so the, I, I would, if if you have a, a loved one or supporter of a person with aphasia. Um, it might be doing the call together to, to get some tech support help. But this is one of these scenarios where I really do feel like, like somebody with co uh, severe cognitive impairment or aphasia that might be difficult to uh, express themselves, uh, that uh, getting a coach like Joan uh, could be a good solution. But because there's limited funds, my my sort of thing is if you've got a friend, family, or loved one, and you can sort of cobble together some support with uh, Go Go Quincy, that might be a solution. That's actually a really important one. I think that speaks to just even how we we manage um, dementia uh, progression. It, bringing in the loved one, yes, it, to work directly with um, this individual would be a challenge. It's just a function of some of the limitations that come with 
uh, being on the phone. But if there's someone who's available, we can, if she's able to communicate to them, we can absolutely help that sandwich child, that adult child, that, that individual move a lot faster with fixing something, setting it up, advising them. That is absolutely a, a great use of even the free uh, uh, tier of Quincy. Okay, great. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. All right. Joan corrected. Oh, oh, here folks. Joan corrected the, uh, the, the webinar, um, date that she was mentioning. Uh, let, oh, let's see, Ryan, it, question on how to contact you via email. I hope you're cool with me dropping your email address. Yes. In. Okay. So I'm dropping Ryan's and it'll be on the recording link as well, folks. Um, I'll make sure that his contact is on there because like, look, if you're an individual and you you got a question, you can reach out to Ryan and he may direct you to somebody, but let's say you're a senior living community and you're looking to, to do something like, like this, you, you've got that. Uh, I did mention the dementia man play and this unbelievable, uh, playwright, uh, Sam Simon, somebody wanted to know, is it online? It, the recording of the play is not online, but you can learn more. And I dropped that into uh, chat. Um, let's see. Uh, Lu Lu Louise asks, do you actually take over my computer to address the issue or do you just instruct me to do that? Great question, Louise. We so I, I don't love using the term take over the computer because we're actually <laughs> never in complete control. Um, you always have the control to push us out. So you are the master, but yes, we can actually control the cursor and we can use the keys to effectively do anything that you could do um, on your device. But again, you can kick us out. We can't kick you out. Uh, we've created a scenario where control is always, final control is always in the user's hands. Uh, here's a great question that I get hit with by these all the time. And I just noticed we're almost to the top of the hour. So folks, if you have to jump off, the recording will be later there up later this afternoon. But uh, Cedar has a great question. I often get emails from PayPal stating that my order payment went through. Everything about the email looks legit. I get to PayPal, check my account and make sure no payment was made. And then I forward the email to, to PayPal. Um, that's a great, like if somebody was concerned about something, that's an opportunity yes. for you to uh, potentially call Go Quincy, correct? Yeah, we do would like, we see that scenario all the time. And just for anyone's edification on this uh, webinar, the first steps are look at who sent the email by clicking it because right out the gate, you'll see, is it from at paypal.com or is it from at billing.xyz.paypal.com. And it is something as simple as that that can confuse a system where it is not from PayPal, but it certainly looks that way. And, and the rest of that email is just a combination of dropping in photos or logos. So nine times out of 10, it's actually, I would say 99 times out of 100, it is not PayPal. Um, yeah. Our first assumption is anyone who says that they are, assume that they are not. And and Cedar, you you your approach is a good one too. Is is that you receive an email that that you are think is from your bank or from PayPal or what have you? Log into your don't click on any link. Log into your account. See if it meshes. If it doesn't, it's like oh that really was a scam. And um, the same thing. I was just with my neighbor the other day. Somebody called and they sounded like his, uh, her son. And, uh, I said, you know, you need to just, Hey, I'm going to call you right back, hang up the phone, call your son. And it's like, mom, why did you hang up on me? I just wanted to make sure it was you, you know? Um, so a couple of little things there, but, but again, you can also call go Quincy. And this is what I mean by where you're, you're solving a problem but you could also be a learning experience in situations like this. Okay. Um, uh, Beverly says we need Android help, not Apple. You all could help somebody. Totally fine. Okay. 
I prefer um, it, frankly. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, okay. I got through that. Let me just go to the bottom. Um, and uh, it's the, we'll make this our last question from Laura. Are you going to talk about what Columbia University is doing that, oh yeah, I, you know, you, this was incubated at Columbia University or tell what the connection is there. Sure. So I think it's first important to say that Columbia University is not involved with this, oh, but okay. it was in school um, when I was a student at Columbia University, Quincy was created in a class. GoGoQuincy.com was created in a class with the help of a number of professors and guidance that really was instrumental in the creation, ranging from what parameters we follow to how best to communicate and and really make this into a credible, helpful service. So no, Columbia University is not involved, but the the inception um, and, was started at Columbia. And if you weren't there and you didn't have the support of your, number one, if you weren't taking the class that challenged you to totally. the, the thing, and then you had the support of your professors. I think I cut and pasted, when I create these promotion folks, I cut and paste you know, these things off the website. And uh, so I, I hope I didn't misrepresent it uh, in doing that. But uh, this this is awesome, Ryan. I uh, Hats off to you on this new venture. I think it, it solves it solves a problem, and uh, I'm really excited about all the folks that that joined in and the great questions that y'all had. It's clear that there is a problem here, and that it's and there's not one solution. And that's what I like is that you're very transparent. Is is that there's not one solution, but this can be a solution to help us navigate this tech support world that's uh, that we're all faced with. And it's not exclusive to older adults, but having a platform that you can get somebody on the phone and talk to somebody is really helpful. Thanks, Steve. I, I just really appreciate this conversation. The engagement from this community has just been so exciting. Um, and we really look forward to being of assistance and just helping us all make technology problems a, a thing of the past. Um, so. I really Look, just appreciate your time. You bet. All right, folks. We'll see you next week and uh, have a great weekend. Thanks a lot. Uh, thanks a lot, Ryan. And thanks a lot, everybody, for uh, tuning in.